for people to understand that, that you are sovereign. You are supreme. And you are through the praise. Before we do anything else, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for being our Heavenly Father. Thank you for never giving up on your people. Thank you for Jesus and the finished work. Thank you for the gracious mercy and love that you had for us. That through Jesus Christ, through his death, burial, and resurrection, we are here today.
it. Glory be to God. Come on, I want you to just holler. Just holler. Oh.
I'm gonna wait on Jesus. But that religious thing can sit right there. You're gonna miss out and wait on Jesus. He's waiting on your word. Yeah, he's waiting on you, amen. So come on, say some people. But say what God say, amen. <laughs> amen. Well, let's just bless the Lord, amen. And let's welcome my Mr. King. She's already in place for our new members graduation. Amen. 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 together 
even more frequently eager to encourage and urge each other on as we in anticipate that day gone. Hallelujah. So I need to be in this corporate assembly around other people that are continuing and helping urge me onward when I don't feel like it. When you don't feel like it, still don't forsake this assembly. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll still give, we'll give our brother and sister their uh, certificate when they arrive. I just wanted to keep that in front of us because we got to get over, we got to overcome the spirit of weariness. We got to overcome this. I, I know it's out there. I know, I know it's there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm going to continue on anyway by the grace, the help of God, the strength of God, the favor of God, his ability, working in me and through me, giving me the ability, giving us the ability to do what we don't have the ability to do. Amen. In Jesus' name. So we just want to celebrate Nikki Randolph and, um, and Andrew Miles. And when you see them, just love on them and tell them congratulations for Completing new members class and let's help them continue steadfastly. Amen. Amen. So we want to bring up Sister Lucy for the ministry of giving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now before you today for the ministry of giving. Hallelujah. Pastor told us on Tuesday, he said, this is our month of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Amen. It is our month of thanksgiving. And we give thanks to God for all he has done in our lives. Praise the Lord. Amen. And one way for us to give thanks to God is to pay our tithes and our offerings. Praise the Lord. I'm going to take us through some scriptures about thanksgiving. Giving us the reason why we should give thanks to God. Because he's been faithful to us. Hallelujah. God has been faithful to each one of us. If we look back to our lives, we can see a point where God was the only one. Hallelujah. That he was the only one that caused that change to come in our lives. Praise the Lord. Let us open our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18. He says, in everything, give thanks. Praise the Lord. He said, in everything. In every situation that you find yourself, the word of God says, give thanks. Hallelujah. Give thanks. Sing praises to him. Hallelujah. Give your vow. Praise the Lord. Give your thanks, thank giving offering to him. That is what the word of God, that's an instruction from God. He said, in all things, give thanks. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That means whether the thing is going in accordance with what you want, give thanks. If it's going in accordance with another thing, give thanks. Yeah. If it's going in according to the, what you have, planned, you have prayed about, give thanks. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So in all situations, the word of God says, give thanks. Yes, Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, for this is the will of yeah. God in Christ Jesus concerning us. So God's desire and his will for us is for us to give him thanks in everything. Hallelujah. We have to be patient and persistent with the will and the purpose of God. Amen. Let us open to Psalm 103, 1 to 4. These are the blessings, praise the Lord, that we receive as we give thanks to God. He said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemed thee thy life from destruction? Who crown thee with kindness and tender mercies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 12, 4 to 5 in the New King James says, And in that day you will say, Praise the Lord. Call upon, call upon his name. Declare his deeds among the people. Make mention that his name is exciting. Sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all earth. Praise the Lord. Psalm 95, verse 1 to 5 in the New King James says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Hallelujah. As I am calling you today, oh, come, let us give thanks to the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. Hallelujah. He said, let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. He said, come before him with thanksgiving. 
Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms, for the Lord is great, God and the great King above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The, he the height of his hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and, and, and his hand formed the dry land. Hallelujah. Psalm 107, um, verse 1 to 4 says, O oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed. Hallelujah. From trouble and gather him in from the land, from the east and from the west, and from the north and from the south. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then uh, Hebrews 13, 5 says, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips, and that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifice, God is in place. Hallelujah. He said, as you give, hallelujah. He said, do not forget to also give to others. Hallelujah. What am I saying? We are giving for others. Hallelujah. As you give to, to the academy, hallelujah. The word of God said, you are doing good also to them. Hallelujah. You are thanking God. God has blessed you and so you are in turn blessing others. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Psalm 102 verse 21 to 26 says, Let us give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and for his wonders to the sons of men. Let them also offer sacrifice and thanksgiving and tell of his work with joyful singing. Hallelujah. Then Psalm 63, 66 verse 13 says, I shall come into the house with burnt offering. Hallelujah. Oh. He said, I will come into his house with burnt offering. Hallelujah. I shall pay my vow. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Which is our offerings. Praise the Lord. My, I, I will pay my vow, which with my lips uttered and my mouth spoke when I was in distress. If you look at your life, there is so much to be thankful for. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is so much to be you can say, oh, Sister Uzi, you don't understand. There are so many things that are happening in this world. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1 verse 17. Praise the Lord. What does it talk about? He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He said something. He said, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Hallelujah. Who are you? He said, the father of glory. That means we are glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, we are glory. Because he's our father. When someone is someone's father, that means that person is his child, right? Yeah. So he called us in Ephesians. He said, he is the father of glory. So we are glory. Oh. Praise the Lord. I'm still coming. When you look at 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 in the Amplified, he said, but we all with open face behold as in a glass, in a mirror, the glory of God. Mm. So the word of God is us. Because we are the glory. That is what the word of God just said in 2 Corinthians 2, 3 verse 18. He said in the mirror, the mirror is God's word. And he said in that mirror you see the glory. And we are the glory. So the, that means we are in the world. And in the word of God, is there anything like poverty in the word of God? No. Hallelujah. That means you can never consider yourself poor. Why? Because you are God's glory. You are his glory. That is what the word of God says. Amen. That is what the word of God is saying. You are his glory. He's the father of glory. And you are his glory. And he said that you be God as in the mirror, the glory of the world. And that mirror is God's word. Praise the Lord. So never say I do not have any more. Why? Because the glory, you are the glory. Yeah. And the word says that you are rich. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So as we carry out this word that God has instructed us in his word, there is so much blessing that is in it. Hallelujah. Let us look at Isaiah 45. Praise the Lord. I want you to put your name there. I'm going to read Isaiah 45, 1 to 3. Amen. This is the blessing that God has for you this month of November. As you key into this time of thanksgiving, hallelujah, as you give not just your material wealth, praise the Lord, but as you give your service to God, 
As you give yourself to God, hallelujah, this will be your portion. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 45, 1 to 3 says, He says, Thou says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyprus. Hallelujah. I want you to say your name there. Amen. Hallelujah. Thou says the Lord to the anointed, to him why, whose right hand I am holding, to subdue nations before him. Hallelujah. This is what God has given me this morning. To subdue nations. Hallelujah. Before him. He said, And I will lose the lines of kings to open before him the two lead gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Hallelujah. So nothing will be shut against us in this month of November as we give our thanksgiving to God. Amen. Then verse 2. It's still getting better. He said, I will go before thee and make the crooked path straight. I will break in pieces the gate of brows and cut in a sword of the praise of iron. Hallelujah. 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 The good one is here in verse 3. He said, and I will give thee the treasures of the darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. Hallelujah. He said, he will give us the riches of the secret places. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, whom call thee by thy name, I am God of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you ready to give? Amen. Amen. Can we all stand up on our feet? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are giving from a grateful heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can you always open your soul? Hallelujah. If you need an envelope, you can take your shoes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To our Facebook family, our friends, there are instructions there for you to follow and give. Amen. Just raise up your giving to the Lord. Hallelujah. Father Lord, we give you praise with all of the Lord Father. We thank you, Lord Father, for this time to give, Lord Father. We thank you because your word has instructed us to give, Lord Father. And we are giving, Lord, because of you. To honor you, Lord Father. To give you praise, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you because the devourer has been rebuked for us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you because through our giving, Lord Father, many souls will come into the kingdom, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Through this giving, Lord Father, men's life will be given the meaning, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you because through this giving, Lord Father, destinies will change, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we thank you for everyone that is giving today, Lord Father. That they will know no lack, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord Father, Holy Spirit of God, you will go before each one of them. Every need is met in their homes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as they have given, Lord Father. Lord, I thank you because the blessing of God, Lord Father, will embarrass each one of them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise and honor, Lord Father, for your name is exalted in us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can obey the ushers.
have to do is believe for it. Amen. The work of the leader.
the salt of the earth. He said the city up on the hill cannot be hidden. That means that we're supposed to be in positions of authority. Amen. Light carries solutions and answers to darkness. The answer to darkness is light. And what we're seeing in the earth today is darkness. So the earth and what we're seeing is demanding light. And we are that light. God has designated light to the church, to the believer. Jesus said we're the light, we're the solution provider to this world's crisis. Right. Amen. Whether it be in business, whether it be in family, whether it be in finances, whether it doesn't matter, whatever the area to be, we are the light of the world. Right. Amen. The salt of the earth. We're the, we're the light, the solution provider. Amen. And not only are we the light, but we're the salt. We're the preserver. Amen. Amen. So this earth cannot be preserved without light. Amen. Glory to God. And without the church. Amen. The church is the last hope for this world. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Why do I say that? Because Jesus said it in Matthew 16, verse 18. He said, upon this rock, I'm going to be in my church. And the gates of hell Amen. will not prevail. Whew. Glory to God. Are y'all seeing this today? Yes. Amen. So he said that, that the church, amen, glory to God, is the, is the solution provider, the light to this, to the, to the economy state of this world. The church. Not the government. Jesus said in, in Isaiah 9, verse 6, the government going to be up on my shoulder. And, and of my kingdom there will be no end. Amen. Since the end to what the government decided to do, the solutions and answers they put in place come to an end. The devil wiped him out. But not the kingdom. Right. Whew, glory to God. Amen. Jesus said, Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will remain forever. Amen. So when God gives you a word, when God gives you a solution, when Jesus gives you the answer, Amen, that's what's going to remain amen. forever. Mm, yes. Glory to God. And see, he told us, look there, in, uh, and, and I'll give you a little preview of what we're going to talk about, because it's going to be so powerful, because I believe we're, we're sitting on unused potential. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. The church is. Yeah. We're the last hope for this world. Amen. Glory to God. And so the world is supposed to be looking to the church for solutions and answers to everything. Mm -hmm. Not the church looking to the world. Glory to God. Oh, boy, it's going to be powerful, too. I'm telling you. Look that way in Luke 19, verse 13. Jesus told his disciples, which we are his disciples. Anybody that's following with Jesus is a disciple of his. Look that in Luke 19, verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered unto them ten pounds and said unto them, do what? I'll buy till I come. Mm. So who in charge? We are. We are. <laughs> Who's supposed to be having all the business? We are. Who's supposed to be making all the decisions? We are. Who's supposed to be controlling the state of this economy? Mm -hmm. We are. Right. He said, occupy till he came. Has he come yet? Yeah. No. Who's supposed to be occupying? Yeah. Us. Yeah. Who's supposed to be in charge? Us. Why? Because we're the one he's given the pounds, the goods, the grace to. Amen. Glory to God. Okay. Are y'all seeing this today? Yeah. Yeah. Another translation said, do business till I come. Amen. Look there at Matthew 25. Let's pick it up in verse 14. Praise the Lord. Y'all pulling this out of me. I'm ready, man. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. You, you are either in one or three of these categories, or you are transitioning from one to the other. Amen. Watch this. Amen. Notice what he said. For the kingdom is of heaven is like a man traveling in a far country who called his own servants. Somebody say, that's me. That's me. He called his own servants. Amen. And delivered unto him what? His good. He's always giving you something. Mm -hmm. Woo, I said he's always giving you something. Yeah. Yeah. He's giving you talents. He's giving you graces. He's giving you callings. He's giving you gifts. Yeah. Amen. To enhance the, the and to preserve, amen, the state of this world. Glory to God. You're an asset in this world, not a liability. Mm -hmm. You're a problem solution provider, not the problem. Amen. You carrying folks answer, not they problem. Amen. You got some goods. Somebody say, I got some goods. I got, I got some goods. Now notice what he said. He delivered unto them his goods. Watch this next verse. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. Every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. Mm -hmm. 
See, see three categories. It, five, two, and one, right? Y'all see that? He's giving it to you according to your ability. Our, our, and then what determines if you get more is your faithfulness with what he gave you. In Luke 16, 11, he said, amen, if you're faithful over a little, he'll make you ruler over much. But how can you be faithful over much when you ain't been faithful over the one, the two he gave you? How can you qualify for five? Amen. So you're in one, one, one of these three categories or you're transitioning from one to the other. Number one, you're either a business owner. Number two, you're either a business leader. See, he gave five talents to the business owner. Gave two talents to the business leader. And gave one talent to the worker or the employee. Amen. But the worker and the employee can go to two and go to five. If he be faithful with the one. Amen. Glory to God. And the one with two can go with being a business leader to a business owner. If he be faithful with the two. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So we're going to talk about that today. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. See, prosperity is not a product, amen, of human achievement. Amen. That prosperity can come to an end. Amen. But this prosperity that Jesus gives is a product of entrustments and your faithfulness. Mmm. That can't come to an end. That can only get better. Woo, glory to God. So it's going to be powerful, y'all. Y'all need, all y'all need to stay and listen to this revelation because to be Properly informed is to be transformed, but to be uninformed is to be conformed. Mm -hmm. See, so either you're uninformed and conformed to this world and its economy state, or you properly informed, being informed, and you're being transformed from your dependency mm -hmm. on the state of this economy. Glory yes. to God. Amen. Are you see this today? Yes. Amen. So we're not to be dependent on this world and the state of its economy. Amen. Glory to God. No, we're dependent on the kingdom economy. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. That has no end. Amen. 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 Glory to God. It just gets better and better and better. Yeah. Because, uh, what is it, Proverbs 4, verse 18, the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter until the perfect day. Mm -hmm. Amen. Glory to God. So I was ministering to this business owner, and, and, and we were there 15 minutes, and he got up, and he said, Pastor Mike, I'll call you later, and I'm going to be sending you something, too. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. And I thought we were going to be there for an hour. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the wisdom just started going forth, the solution to answer to his crisis. Amen. And he took off, man. I'm like, praise God. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, you're supposed to be giving this to the leaders of the ministry. They're supposed to be first fruits, partakers of this. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And so I immediately called Sister Brittany and told her to set this meeting today. Amen. Because when the Lord instructs you to do something, you got to be prompt. Amen. How you respond to instructions will determine how he responds to you. Amen. Mm. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody say that's good. That's good. Amen. All right. So we'll get the rest after service today. We'll take about 40, 40, 45 minutes to minister on kingdom prosperity. Amen. And, uh, and, 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 and uh, uh, the Lord's dealing with me about putting teams together because, amen, uh, uh, you know, I've ministered to a lot of people who are doing real well now. Amen. And I haven't asked them for anything. Amen. That's one of the things the Lord told me. He said, freely you give, so, so freely you receive, freely you give. So I've never put any charge on my wisdom, on the wisdom, because it ain't mine, it's his. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And the, and the value that people put on it, that's up to them. Amen. Glory to God. And so some, they sow back and they contribute back. Some don't. Amen. Glory to God. But that's between them and God. Amen. Right. Glory to God. And so, and so uh, the Lord, he, he showed me, he said, uh, you know, you need to get these people that you minister to to come and help the people at the ministry. Amen. To come and, and, and share with them. Contribute to their support. Amen. Glory to God. And so uh, in any field that you're in, business-wise, amen, grace-wise, gifts-wise, if you decide to start a business, or if the Lord is dealing with you about starting a business, we got teams of people that will assist you in that. 
Amen. Even with resources, you don't even need a bank necessary. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody say, forget the bank. Forget the bank. Jesus is the bank. Jesus. Jesus. The church is the bank. The kingdom is the bank. The kingdom is the bank. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I hardly ever use the bank for anything. You know, I, the Lord always pointed me to a relationship. Mm -hmm. Amen. Look, and I just went and told them what the Lord was telling me to do. And they said, well, let me help you. Mm. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. So there are things we can do together without going outside of the church. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So the Lord told me earlier this year, he said, son, I am anointing you and appointing you and sending you to get rid of people's excuses for living in defeat. Mm. So you don't have a reason for living in defeat and doing without, no matter what kind of common crisis we face, to be properly informed is to be transformed. And to be uninformed is to be conformed. Amen. So either you're being informed and you're not doing what you're informed, or you're not, amen, attending to the instruction. Amen. Glory to God. You're trying to solve your problem some other way than what Jesus told you. Amen. And that's conforming you to this world's standard and state. But anytime you get informed, pay attention, do what you're informed, instructed to do, he transforms you. Amen. Glory to God. And see, in that transformation, there's, you lose your dependency upon the world and people. Yes. And you train yourself to depend on God. Amen. Who will never leave you or forsake you? Amen. Who will never disappoint you? Amen. Mm. Glory to God. Amen. I like to think that and believe that I'm depending on you. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why I stay happy. Because I know He's going to always come through. <laughs> Woo! No matter what I'm facing, he got the solution that I was for. Family crisis, financial crisis, healing crisis. I know he's going to come through. Why? Because he said, if I be for you, who can be against you? Yeah. Woo! And then he demonstrates to me to the degree that he's for me. Romans 8, verse 32. He did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us what? All things. Oh. And then look at his commitment. Look at look at how look at his degree. His his commitment that him being for you. Look at verse thirty three. Even when you make wrong choices and bad decisions, he's still for you. He's still not uncommitted. Glory to God. Look, who shall lay in the name to the charge of God's elect? Amen. It's God that justified. Look at verse 34. Amen. Who is he that condemned? It's Christ that died. Yea, rather than condemning us, blaming us. Amen. Look what he knew. He rose again. He's even at the right hand of God. Doing what? Making intercession for you. So you ain't got no excuse for living in defeat. Woo! Well, you don't know what all I've done. All what I've been through. He knew. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he wiped it all out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Other people may remember. They may talk about it and bring it up, but it don't matter. Amen. It's what he say that stand. It's what he say that count. It's what he do that works. Amen. Glory to God. So rather blaming us and condemning us, amen, he got there with the Father on the right hand side of God and told God to remember something. Remember what? I promised them to never leave them, never forsake them. I promised them to be with them to the end. I promised to be their helper, their healer, their deliverer, their savior, their Lord. I promise, and I'm committed to that promise that made that happen. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. Woo! I like how Jesus talked to God. Hallelujah. I'd rather let him talk to God on my behalf. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got to in this day. Somebody say, I don't have no reason to live in defeat. Amen. I don't have no excuse. No reason. I can't blame the others. I can't blame the state of this economy. I can't blame the color of my skin. I can't blame how I grew up, what people done to me. I can't blame that anymore. Why? Because the blood washed it all out. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus said, Whom the Son set free is free indeed. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory be to God. 
Now, let's get into this word today, and then we're going to receive communion. Amen. Glory to God. Turn there in your Bibles to Psalms 11. Psalms 11. Amen. Let's pick it up in verse 3. We're going to talk about the force of righteousness. The force of righteousness. Now, I come to church like I come to school to get instruction. Amen. Glory to God. And, it, and the value, the quality, the effect of instruction is determined by the value you put on it, the attention you give to it. Amen. I don't go to church and go, go to school to go to sleep. Amen. I go to school to get instruction. Right. And that requires me to pay attention. Amen. 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 Ain't that right? Amen. Because all of us, amen, our life itself, listen to me, life itself is a test, a race, and a fight. Life itself is composed of three things, a test, a race, and a fight. And listen, you either in one, just coming out of one, or on your way to another. Amen. amen. And, how, and how prepared you are, amen, glory to God, will determine how you fail amen. in the race, the test, the fight. And life's test, race, and fight, they come unannounced. Amen. Amen. They don't do like the public school system tell you you're going to have a test right. That ain't, that ain't the way life tests. And they don't give you no warning. Amen. But, but Jesus prepares you. Amen. Go for the God for what's to come. And he'll even show you things to come if you'll let it. He'll show you that you need to be preparing for a race, a test, a fight. Amen. Glory to God. And the tools that equip you for the race, the test, and the fight is the Word of God, is the Holy Spirit, is prayer, the assembly of the saints, amen, and pastors and teachers. These are settings that instruct you and inform you of how to prepare for life's race, test, and fight. Amen. amen. Glory to God. And how you treat instructions determines, amen, how God treats you. Mmm. Are y'all hearing this today? Amen. Amen. The, 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 the attention, the value, the importance you place on instructions, amen, will determine how you fare in any test. Will determine the quality of life you live. Proverbs 4.13, 4, 4, take fast hold to instructions. Don't let her go, for she is your life. Whew, glory to God. She is your life. She is your life. The quality of life you live is in the instructions that you hear and keep. Mm. See, don't want to always somebody to give you stuff. That will poison you and cripple you. Amen. Ask them, look, 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 I'd rather you teach me how you got there. Because you give it me all the time. It's going to train me to depending on you. But if you want to help me, Give that to me. Help me. But then, amen, teach me how you got it. Yes. Why you helping me. Yes. Amen. I'm going to receive the help, the relief. But when you teach me, I'm going to go from relief to freedom. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm. amen. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. I always ask the Lord, should I take that or not? And sometimes he'll say, no, don't take it. Tell him to show me how you got it. Because to see the, the 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 learning how to receive it is better than the blessing you receive. Amen. Yeah. Why? The blessing you receive, you can spit that up. Amen. You can use that up. But if you learn how to receive it, oh, you can keep using it and keep receiving. Oh, no, <laughs> Glory. Now you become an asset to others. Yes. Glory to God. Psalms, amen, 11, verse 3, amen, we're talking on a message called, amen, the force of the effect of righteousness, amen. Notice, see, if the foundations of the world, the principles upon which things are built upon, if they be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And everywhere we look around us, we see foundations, the principles of which things were built upon, we see them being attacked and destroyed, amen, mm -hmm. glory to God. Amen. Even not only the, the, the Constitution of America, 
but the constitution of a man and a woman is being destroyed. Amen. That's true. Amen. Amen. The principle of some of which things are built upon are being attacked. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said when, when the principles of which things are built upon, the foundations of which things are built upon are destroyed, the righteous is supposed to do so. Mm -hmm. That's true. Can you see this? Yeah. The righteous always have solutions and answers. Amen. To this world's crisis. Glory to God. Now look there with me to Psalms 82. Let's pick it up in verse 5. Psalms 82. We're looking at the effects. The effects and force of righteousness. Amen. Glory to God. Then we're going to look at what is righteousness. What righteousness is. Amen. Notice he says. They know not. Neither do they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the world are out of course. God is describing the day that we're living in. He said it's going to be out of course. But he said that if, if, if it's out of course, if the foundations are destroyed, the principles on which things are built upon, he said the righteous can do so. Okay. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, look at with me to uh, uh, Proverbs 14. Let's pick it up in verse 28. Amen. Proverbs 14, verse 28. Thank you, Bible man. You're a blessing. It says, in the multitude of people. Uh, now, any, any, is it 32? Proverbs 14, 32. Amen. Or is it 15, 28? Amen. Proverbs 14, 8. Amen. No, Proverbs 15, 15, 9. 15, 9. Amen. It talks about it. Amen. Glory to God. Listen to me. What he says. Uh, he said. Uh, uh, he said the way of the wicked is abomination to the Lord, but he loves him that follow after righteousness. Now God loves everybody, but uh, when he's talking about love in this verse, he's talking about favor. Okay. Look at Proverbs chapter five. Look at verse twelve. Amen. The Lord shall bless the righteous with favor. Would he compass him about as with a shield? Are y'all seeing this? Amen. Proverbs, Proverbs what? Psalms, Psalms 5, verse 20. Yeah, yeah, with favor. See, he loves everybody, but he's not pleased with everybody. Amen, Amen. and whoever he's pleased with, that's who he favors. Woo, glory to God. For the Lord will bless who? The righteous. With favor will he compass him about as with a shield. Woo, glory. So the righteous are carrying favor from God. I said favor from God. Mm -hmm. And this is the outcome of the favor of God. Look that with me if you would to Psalms 44. Let's pick it up in verse 3. Amen. Glory to God. This is the outcome of the favor of God. For they got not their land in possession by their own credit. Are you seeing that? About their own job. Mm, about their own resources. Okay. Woo, sometimes if you got resources, they'll still deny you. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. But there's one thing they can't deny. Mm -hmm. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thy arm and the light of thy countenance because you favor them. That's how they got that problem. Wow. That's how they got that land. Wow. That's how they got that business. That's how they got their breakthrough. Amen. Because righteous demanded favor from God. Glory to God. Amen. Look at Israel. They worked for 400 years. Amen. Making straw without, making brick without straw. I mean, from sun up to sundown. And they still were in lack, won't need. They still were oppressed. Amen. But one day of favor. Amen. Psalms 105 verse 37 said, He bought them out with silver and gold, and there was not a feeble one among them. Tried. One day a favor did for them with a lifetime of labor. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, it will. Woo! Oh, Glory yes, to God. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. So favor is what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Believe in for. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And favor is a result of being righteous. Is an effect of being righteous. Amen. Woo! Are y'all seeing this today? Amen. Amen. Look at Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10. The Bible says, Say unto the righteous. Woo! Say what to them? That it shall be well. It shall be well. It shall be well. 
for they shall eat of the fruit of their God. Y'all say it is. It's always way over the righteous. Woo! Glory to God. You ask people, say, how's it going? All is well. Are you righteous? Because <laughs> if not, that's just fictitious. Amen. Glory. That's just assuming. Hallelujah. You want to be sure. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So when I order my life according to what Jesus said, that's what made me righteous. Righteous is conformity. Righteousness is conformity to what Jesus said. Every time you conform, adjust, and adapt to what Jesus said, that make you righteous. This is why the Pharisees, even though they kept the law, kept everything intact in order, they still wasn't righteous in God's eyes. Why? Because they didn't conform to what Jesus said. Look there in John chapter 5. Let's pick it up in verse uh, uh, 39. Jesus told the Pharisees, said, search the scriptures, and there are they that testify of me, but you won't come to me that you may have eternal life. See, they'll read the scroll of the scriptures, but they wouldn't come to the one they talk that the scriptures talk. They wouldn't conform to him. <clears throat> so that's what made them unrighteous, because they didn't conform to what Jesus said. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you seeing this? Amen. Amen. See, they were conforming to what Moses said. All of them, but they weren't conforming to what Jesus said. Mm. And Moses even said, Amen. God will raise up another prophet. Him should you hear. Woo. Look that way to Hebrews chapter 1. Look at verse 3. Amen. God who had sundry time. Let's pick it up in verse 1. Verse 1. God who had sundry time. Spake unto us, spake unto us, and spake unto us unto the fathers and by the prophets. But well, watch this. Now, whoo, happening in these last days, how is he speaking to us? Through his son. Shh, glory to God. Whoa, glory. And he's anointed Jesus heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Are y'all seeing this? Look at John 6, look at verse 45. Watch how God treat what Jesus said. Amen. And notice what he said in John 6. It is written in the prophets, all shall be taught of God. And every man therefore that has heard and has learned of the Father coming to Muhammad, Buddha, Mary, the Pope, God, who they come to? Who God sending them to? Jesus. <laughs> Woo! He sending them to Jesus. If you're going to get anything from me, Amen. If you're going to get taught by me, amen, you're going to have to go see Jesus. Wow. Glory to God. You're going to have to conform to what he said. Mm -hmm. Woo! Glory yeah. to God. Ah, ah. He got the last word on everybody. Yes, and what he said, go. Yeah. Woo! Glory to God. Are y'all seeing this today? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So righteousness is conformity to what Jesus said. Amen. Without protest, argument, or without wishing it was different. Amen. Amen. Every time you receive what Jesus say, without protest, argument, without opinions, and wishing it was different, that transfer you from unrighteous to righteous. And favor belong to you. And it's going to be well with you. Yes, Lord. Amen. But as long as you struggle, amen, with what Jesus said, Make excuses, make opinions, amen. It ain't going to be well with you, amen. And ain't no favor going to be on you, amen. Let's look at a picture of this, amen. Glory to God. Look at uh, Luke chapter Luke chapter 15. Let's pick it up in verse 16, amen. There was a son, a father. He had two sons. One of them decided to take his, his inheritance, his belongings, and go off into another land, do what he wanted to do. See, he didn't want to conform. Amen. And the Bible said it got so bad in that land. Look at verse 15. Pick it up in verse 15. Amen. Glory to God. It got so bad in that land. Amen. A famine came. Amen. And he went and joined himself. See, instead of conforming to what his father said, coming back home. Amen. He tried to work it out in his own opinion, in his own strength. Amen. Instead of conforming and doing what Jesus said. Amen. Living by the word, not living by bread. 
alone. Amen. Glory to God. Whosoever hear these things of mine, doing them. I would like it unto them a wise man which built this house, his marriage, his life up on the rock. Amen. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, beat up against it, they fell not. Glory. Why? Because it was founded upon doing, conforming to what Jesus said. Amen. Glory to God. Not excuses and opinions. All right, now watch this. Notice, he, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him in his fields to feed swine. So why couldn't he just go home and join himself to his father? Amen. So it's like when Christ said, the pain ain't got right yet. <laughs> and the pain ain't right. <laughs> sometimes people do right. But sometimes even people who are in pride, when the pain get right, they still don't conform and do right. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Think about that. Getting whooped on every side and still won't conform. <laughs> Amen. Are y'all seeing this? You become an enemy to yourself. An enemy to your destiny, your future, when you don't conform. Amen. Amen. Until you conform to what Jesus said, he can't transform you into who he is. He can't reproduce himself in your situation. Now notice what he said. And he joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into the fields of sweet swine. Amen. Look how cruel that is. Here's this boy coming from a place of honor. A place of abundance. And pride has so deceived him. Mm, that he, he's accepting Mediocrity, status quo, bad memory. Mm. Pride is so cruel. Mm. Amen. Now notice what happened. Now watch. Notice what happened. Amen. Next verse. Glory to God. And he would have fain filled his belly with the husk of the swine near me, and no man what? See, it ain't well with him. Why? Because he's not conforming. See, when you don't conform, other people don't conform. Mm. It's supposed to be given to this boy. He's coming from a righteous stock. Whew. Glory to God. And faith is supposed to be on his life. Glory to God. And it's supposed to be given to him. People are supposed to esteem and appreciate him, value him. They're supposed to see the distinction between him and others. Woo! Glory to God. But the Bible said no man gave him. When you get in a place where people are not favoring you, not doing extra for you, not going out of their way for you, not changing policies and rules for you, then you don't left righteousness. You don't quit conforming so. Right. Yeah. Mm. Ah! What is it good? Because it's always well with the righteous. And the righteous are those who conform to what Jesus said without protest, argument, and without wishing it was different. Mm -hmm. Now watch this boy. He's going to begin to conform. Watch this. No man gave him nothing. Amen. We're going. Next verse. Glory to God. Verse 17. Glory to God. And when he came to what? To himself. See, to himself. This is when you're going to start conforming to what Jesus said when you have a meeting with yourself. And you ask yourself, why am I at odds with Jesus? Why am I trying to use my life to prove him wrong? Mm. That's a misuse of my life, trying to prove him wrong. When God already done approved of him and I disapprove of him, I'm at odds with God. I'm at odds with creation. I'm at odds with nature. I'm trying to prove somebody who can't be wrong, wrong. Are you seeing this? Mm -hmm. Even if you ain't going right, don't try to don't try to make no excuses and defend it. Just say, Jesus, I ain't right. I, you know, I know what you want, and that's right what you want. I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna let you what you say go. I'm wrong. You right. See if you stay like that, you'll keep the mercy door open. But if you get, begin to make excuses, coming up with your own opinion, trying to prove him wrong, lower his standards and requirement, your door of mercy is ending, it's closing. Amen. Amen. Are y'all sitting this today? Amen. That's how I keep God on my side. I said, Lord, I ain't doing that, but you show enough right. You right, Lord. You right. You right. Help me to do that. Don't change what you require. Change me so I can meet it. Amen. 
that's what made the difference between David and Saul. Both of them sinned, done wrong, acted unrighteous. But the difference between Saul and David, amen, was Saul required God to change his requirements. Amen. David required God to change him, creating me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit. Change me. Don't change what you require. And God said to David in Acts 13, 22, was a man after his own heart. Glory to God. Why? Because he didn't try to change what God required. He required God to change him, conform him. Hmm. Is this happening in the Bible? Glory to God. Hey, man, we're getting the word here. Yes, we do. Man, this is Some tradition, religion. Now, ladies, tussle rolls and Kool-Aid get you all hyped. And then when Monday and Tuesday show up, somebody cross you out and make you mad, Jesus don't come out. Mm. <laughs> 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 ah, praise the Lord. And so notice what he said there. Amen. He came to himself and he said, how many high servants do my father have? Watch this. The high servants, because they conforming. Guess what? They got bread and extra to eat. Glory to God. Y'all see that? It's well with them. Woo! And then the servants had the same rule as the son. Stay at the father's house. Keep doing what he said. Then the servants stayed at the father's house. Kept doing what he said. And they kept being well with him. Glory to God. But the son, ah, <laughs> I ain't conforming. <laughs> and he went out and he did good for a while until the state of the economy changed. Right? And the economy always going to change, y'all. It's going to always change. The state of this world is always going to change because this system is governed by Satan. We in the world, but we're not of it. We, we, don't, we don't govern ourselves by this world's standard. Amen. We don't conform to it. We got a standard to conform to. And our standard is righteousness. Conforming to what Jesus said. If Jesus said, go to church, I'm going to church. If Jesus said, forgive my enemy, I'm going to forgive my enemy. If Jesus said, pray, I'm going to pray. If Jesus said, give, ties it off, I'm going to give, ties it off. I ain't going to come up with no own opinion when he always right and what's best and got my good in mind. Glory to God. I'm going to conform. Mm, yes. And that stuff going to conform to me. Yeah, yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I y'all see this? Mm -hmm. He said they got bread enough to eat at the spout. And they got them perishing in hunger. Mm -hmm. Boy, watch. The pain got back. Notice next verse. Glory to God. The Bible said the next verse. Hey, Amen. Watch how he switched. Watch how he began to conform. He said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to arise. And I'm going to go to my father. And I'm going to say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Look at this conformity, y'all. Conformity. Now watch what it brought to him. Notice the next verse. Woo! Glory to God. Look at what it, look at what righteousness, conformity to what Jesus said. Look what it, it will attract to you. Even when you've been wrong. Amen. That's why we don't have no excuse. Amen. Uh, the only thing God is requiring you to do is to conform to what he said. In thought, word, and deed. Mm. And he's going to do the rest. Yeah. Woo! Glory to God. And I'm not willing to be called your son. Make me as one of your high servants. Mm. And watch what happened. And the boy, amen, glory to God. In the next verse, and he arose. And he came to his father. See, a lot of times we know to do something right. But we don't, we don't act on it. Glory to God. Amen. We don't go from being, amen, uh, convinced to convicted. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people convinced that they wrong, but they ain't convicted. And when you're convicted, you, it's in your soul, man. Yep. Yeah. You ain't blaming it on nobody. You ain't making excuses. Amen. You ain't saying, amen, glory to God, because they did this and did that. No. Amen. You convicted of that thing. Now you're finna do something about it. Woo, glory to God. Then you see you go from convinced.
to convict it, and then you go do something about it, and you're going to go from, from conviction to conversion. Mm. Yeah. Three C's, ain't that good? Uh -huh. yeah. Convince, convicted, convert. Oh, boy, that's a message right there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's the process of salvation. Amen. Convince, convicted, converted. Amen. They say many people live in convince. They don't ever go from convinced to convicted. They don't ever go, they live in conviction and guilt and shame and condemnation. And they never do go from convicted to converted. Glory to God. And the only thing that can convert you is the gospel. Because that's why you're going to find out God loved you in Christ on the cross. When you were dead wrong. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So without the Bible, we'll just live in conviction. I don't need to read that I ever wrote by some man. Well, I'm telling you, live in your conviction then. Glory, because what without this gospel, without what Jesus did in them red scriptures, amen, you can't go from conviction to conversion. Glory to God. Somebody said the Bible is relevant. It's a story of redemption and restoration. Oh, glory to God. Amen. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was a young great girl, his father did what? Saw him. See, God see you conforming. He see you, amen, when you get that text, when you get that phone call saying, Lord, help me not do it. He see you when you flick on your social media saying, Lord, I said I repent of this and I'm doing this. He see you when you, amen, when you say, Lord, I ain't going around that no more. I'm not going to get involved with that no more. Help me, strengthen me, give me grace to open it. See, he see that. He see you conforming. Glory to God. And in some cases, you don't even get to get all the way to the end. Once he see you conforming, amen, he's going to start conforming others. His father wasn't even thinking that he was just working on the field. And all of a sudden, God put an idea in his head. Your son is coming home today. Get ready. Get the best robe ready. Get the shoes and the rain ready. Get the fatty calf ready. Hallelujah. See, when you start conforming, God will start conforming others. Hallelujah. Oh, really, God. Are y'all seeing this? I said, are y'all seeing this? Amen. People shouldn't have to be made to help you. They should delight in helping you. See, when God did with people about helping you, they said, man, you don't owe me nothing. You don't have to pay back nothing. You're out there get to do this. Yes. Yes, Lord. See, put favor on you. Amen. It always go well with you when you conform. Amen. This is my secret conformity to what Jesus said. It is all. Glory to God. I know whatever situation I'm facing, whatever I'm dealing with, is a direct indication to me conforming to what Jesus say. That's going to determine if I succeed or fail. Because when I conform to what he say, everything else conforms to me. <clears throat> Even people you've done wrong. And that was the same Proverbs 16, 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he make all his enemies. To be at peace with people who done all your enemies, they threaten. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you, but they never do get to get you. <laughs> and you still on their list, but they, 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 every time they get to you, they change their mind, put you off, proto. I'm gonna get you though. I'm not just not right now. But, <laughs> that don't mean you get off their list. It just means they don't ever get to get you. <laughs> How you saying this? Amen. Amen. I know some people want to get me, but they ain't going to never get me. Amen. Because I'm going to keep conforming. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to keep conforming to what Jesus said. Glory to God, because that's what makes me righteous. That's what makes it well with me. That's what favor me. Glory to God. And listen to me. Yeah, that's good. The Bible man ain't going to choke it. They ain't putting the scripture on the Pray, God. When a man ways please the Lord, out of my ways please the Lord. When I conform to what he say, without protest, argument, or without wishing it was different. And if I wasn't a Christian, I'd bust you upside your head. Well, you ain't conforming. Just in letter, in law, not in heart. Amen. Attitude. Amen. What's wrong with you today? 
I ain't saying nothing. Ain't no conformity. Ain't better conformity in. Ain't that? The Bible said they gladly received his word. Acts 2 verse 40. Amen. That's why when people get baptized, don't nothing change. Because ain't no conformity. They just get me baptized because they're friends or, you know, their parents want them to. Uh, you know, they just feel good about Jesus. There ain't no conformity in their heart. Because when you get baptized with conformity in your heart, you're glad. Amen. You're rejoicing. Amen. You go down happy, come up happy. Woo, <laughs> and I didn't believe that you did happy. Because that's conformity. Glory to God. The Lord gave me this revelation. Amen. He said, if the foundations of this world be destroyed, what can the righteous do? How did the foundations get destroyed? How did the principles get attacked? How did they? See, no conformity. No conformity. No conformity. Wishing things were different. Amen. Now notice what? Go back to Proverbs 16. Amen. The boy came home. He said, Father, I'm not worthy of being a child. Make me, make me a servant. And the father did what? He ran to him. Amen. Verse 17, at Luke 15, 17. The Bible said, he ran to him. Verse 18, he ran to him. Somebody said, the father's running to me. The father's father running, running to me. me. Amen. Luke, Luke 15, I think it's verse 18. He said, I will rise, go for it. He said, this even before thee. Verse 19, and the Bible says, glory to God, why he was off a great way off. Verse 19, and no more word. Verse 20, and why he was a great way off. He arose again, but when he was a yet a great way off. Somebody said, a great way off. Yeah, so he ain't going to say it a way off. But God wants to see you. He wants you to see what conformity attracted you. Okay. It can be folks in other countries. Amen. Other places in the world. When you begin to conform, woo, you get testimony like Sister Vicky got back last week. Stuff show up in your bank account yeah. from unexpected quarters. Next verse. 
Glory to God. I know this story is familiar to y'all, but see, that's why we miss it, because we're looking familiar stuff instead of looking at it spiritually. Okay. Amen. Amen. And like Jesus is speaking to us. Amen. And the son said to the father, I've sinned against you in your sight. I'm no more to be called your son. Next verse. Glory to God. And he goes on to say, but the father said to his servants. Watch. He didn't even talk to the son. He said, I ain't going to let you, you know, tell me why I shouldn't do what I'm doing. Now, I just see you conforming. Just leave it right there. See, sometimes we over talk. Especially when you get involved with sin. Amen. That's when you, you talk yourself out of doing it. You just let it be what it is. I'm wrong. But you know if so and so wouldn't have did that to me, I wouldn't have did that. No, nah, oh, man, come on. We put no trailers on that, no buffers on that. Amen. 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 Notice the father quit listening to him. What are you talking about making him a servant and not a son? Make you what you ain't made. You were made my son. Now I get to treat you like that. Are y'all seeing this? Yeah. And he put it, notice, he said, bring what? A best robe. Yeah. Amen. Put it on him. And bring the ring and put it on his hand. And put some shoes on this boy's feet. See, the father can't stand to look at you. Amen. In your unconformed state. He got to make you look immediately, suddenly, like you have conformed. Glory to God. Are y'all seeing this? Yes. And y'all can read the rest of the story. Go kill the fat and cows. Mm -hmm. Let's celebrate his conformity. Yeah. Woo! Don't you know that's how I am all heaven, all the angels, whatever the Bible said, Luke 15, verse 3, when one sinner repent, all the angels in heaven, when one sinner conform, all the angels in heaven celebrate. God celebrates conformity to what Jesus said. He greatly rewards it. Why? Because that's what makes you righteous. That's what makes it well with you. When you conform to what Jesus said. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Many of you in here right now. Amen. Glory to God. You've been having conflict with the Lord. Something he done told you to do. Something he done made clear. Amen. You're making excuses. Putting it off. Amen. Glory to God. No, go ahead and conform right now. Go ahead and conform. Jesus, I accept. Say this with me. Jesus, Jesus. I accept what you say. I accept what you say. Without protest. Without protest. Without argument. Without and without wishing it was different. Without I receive what you say I receive what you with, say. Meekness with meekness and honor, and honor. As, though as though it's the only way, it's the, only way. The, best way. the best way. There can't be another way be another than the way you say it is. So I conform with my heart and with my mind and with my words and with my actions by your grace and by the help of the Holy Spirit I surrender I conform to you and what you say unreservedly I'm conform I'm surrender I'm up under your Lordship I'm up under your care and I thank you that you care for me watchfully and affectionately. There is nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken where my life is concerned. It's well with me because my conformity to what you said has made me righteous. And you said in your word, say to the righteous that it should be well with me. So I decree and declare that I'm the righteousness of God and it's always well with me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Oh God! Praise the Lord! Oh. Amen! Glory to God! We're going to be on this series for, amen, quite some time. We're going to take it through the end of the year. Amen.
Amen. Because this year needs to end with it, with it being well with us. We need to go into 2023 with it being well with us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now one of us, no one of us, amen, glory to God, will experience, amen, it not being well with you. Amen. Because I'm going to present to you, amen, arguments, amen, uh, 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 arguments, like a lawyer do, the uh, jury. Okay. You the jury. I'm just going to present, I'm a lawyer, amen, and I'm going to lie to you for your consent. Oh, to God. Amen. I'm going to keep loving you until you consent and conform. Yes, so it'll be well with you. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now think about it. Jesus would never ask us to do something that he wouldn't help us do. Amen. Everything he asks us to do, he's going to help us. He's going to help us do it. So we don't have no excuse. Amen. Like I say, don't try to come up with an opinion. Don't, don't try to make him wrong. Just say, Lord, you're right. I'm wrong. And keep the door of mercy open. Okay. Amen. Amen. Don't close the door of mercy by making excuses mm -hmm. and cheapening his requirements. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You don't have an excuse when he tells you to do something. Because mm -hmm. if you had an excuse, he wouldn't tell you to do it. Right. Woo! Amen. Ah! Amen. So don't make one. Amen. Amen. You close the door of mercy. And when the door of mercy is closed, favor leave. Amen. It don't be well with you no more. Somebody say, it ain't hard. Don't make it hard. All right. Amen. Let's receive our communion. Amen. Glory to God. Those of you who are ministering at the communion table. Amen. Glory to God. Praise team. Amen. The band. Amen. Glory to God. Stretch your hand towards the communion element. Those of you who are at home. Amen. Go ahead and get your communion elements. Amen. Glory to God. And let's, let's join together today. Glory to God. In partaking of the Lord's table. Now you know when you partake of the Lord's table. Yeah, that's right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Glory to God. For the blood of Jesus Christ. His precious body that was broken for us. His blood that was shed for us. We thank you for the ministry of the communion table and the mysteries that are in it, that are hidden in it. We thank you that as we partake of this communion table, we're partaking of Jesus' life. We're partaking of you, Father. And Jesus said in John 6, verse 53 through 58, that whosoever eateth of my bread and drinketh of my blood he have eternal life abiding, dwelling, living in him. Glory to God. So those of us, if you're not born again today, if Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, amen, then the communion table, instead of it being a blessing, will become a judgment. Amen. So to get on the other side, glory to God, on the blessing side, go ahead and receive Jesus right now as your Lord and as your Savior and as the partner of your sin. You can receive him right now. Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. Jesus said in John 6, 37, whosoever cometh to me in no way will I turn them back. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, whosoever confess Jesus as Lord, believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead, they should be saved. Jesus only took communion with his disciples, those who were saved. Glory to God. So if that's you, you want to die right now, you're not sure where you would go, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to come in my heart and be the Lord and Savior of my life. I believe that you're the Son of God who died on the cross, paid the penalty, the consequences for all my sins. I believe on the third day you arose from the dead. I believe that you're seated on God's right hand side. And you said in your word that if I would come to you, you would not turn me back. So just as I am, I come to you, Jesus. And 
I thank you for saving me. I thank you for delivering me. I thank you for setting me free. Because of my confession and belief upon you, according to the scriptures, I am a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things are new. I thank you that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate those who pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Now let's continue to pray. Stretch your hand towards the communion table. Father, we thank you that as we partake of the broken body of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and of his shed blood, we thank you that we become one with him. And whatever can't live in him is no longer permitted to live in us. We thank you that the very life that sustained him would be the very life that sustains us. We thank you that as we partake of this broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his shed blood, oh, the effects of eternal life, the life that lives itself, the life of the eternal God himself will dwell within us and among us. We thank you that our bodies, our souls, and spirits will be marked and indicate to the devil that we're not his anymore, that we belong to you. And we thank you that every sickness, every disease that's working in our bodies will be uprooted, forcefully removed at the protecting of the broken body of Jesus Christ. And every sin that we've committed, oh God, will be washed out into the sea of forgiveness to never ever be remembered anymore at the protecting condemnation, guilt, shame will come to an end and vacate the premises. And we'll live in open joy and rejoicing with you. And so we thank you for your broken body. We thank you for your shed blood. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory to God. Let us partake. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
thank you for the healing of virtual power that is now working in our bodies, canceling the effects of all frailty and weakness. Thank you for this sense of righteousness, this sense of belonging to you, of being one with you. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you right now for the communion table. Your broken body that was broke for us. You took our infirmities, bore our sicknesses. When you died on the tree, and by your stripes, we are healed, whole, and well. That same Holy Spirit that raised you up from the dead, he dwells in us, and he is now quickening our mortal bodies. Oh, we thank you for this renewed, revived strength in our physical system as a result of partaking of the bread, the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. After we've partaken of the bread, now we turn to the blood, the blood that ratified the covenants of promise, the blood that made us heirs of God, joint heirs with you, the blood that put us in one and in unions with you. The blood that cries and speaketh better things than that of the innocent blood of Abel that was shed. This blood has provided us an eternal, eternal redemption. This blood cleanses, purges, and washes all guilt, condemnation, attacks upon our soul. Our souls are now being liberated from all of its persecutors, incarcerators, and captivity. And now in acknowledgement of you and your shed blood and how it speaks better things to us. Who glory, we take drink of your blood and this we do in remembrance of you. Let us take drink. Amen. The Bible said, don't grow weary in knowing well. Amen. You will receive 
in due season if you faint not. Amen. Powerful revelation the Lord gave us. Amen. Well, will you stand to your feet if you will? Glory to God. We're going to, amen, dismiss and then we'll go use the bathroom facilities to get refreshed and then we'll come back in. I tell you what, I'm going to cut it to 25 minutes. Okay. Uh, the, the business meeting, I'll cut it to 25 minutes. I'll give, me, I'll give us about 10 minutes to get refreshed and then uh, come back in. Amen. And we'll go for 20 minutes on the business meeting. Amen. And, uh, and then we'll be concluding for today. Amen. Glory to God. Well, amen. I would say amen. Amen. That it's always our prayer uh, to our Heavenly Father that God's riches and this be yours. But we haven't dismissed yet. But we'll say it to the Facebook partners and friends. Amen. We appreciate y'all joining us today. Wish you could have been here. Amen. But until next time, it's our prayer on, to our Father on your behalf.